in Florida, 12,000 genetically modified mosquitoes, the first such kind, will be released in open air for the next 12 weeks by autumn. Praise be Jesus Christ. We come to Our Lady of Guadalupe on her feast day with troubled and heavy hearts. Our nation is going through a crisis which threatens its very future as free and democratic. The worldwide spread of Marxist materialism, which has already brought destruction and death to the lives of so many, and which has threatened the foundations of our nation for decades, and now seems to seize the governing power over our nation. To attain economic gains, we as a nation have permitted ourselves to become dependent upon the Chinese Communist Party, an ideology totally opposed to the Christian foundations upon which families and our nation remains safe and prosper. I speak of the United States of America, but evidently many other nations are in the throes of a similar, most alarming crisis. Then there is the mysterious Wuhan virus about whose nature and prevention the mass media daily give us conflicting information. What is clear, however, is that it has been used by certain forces, inimical to families and to the freedom of nations, to advance their evil agenda. These forces tell us that we are now the subjects of the so-called Great Reset the new normal, which is dictated to us by their manipulation of citizens and nations through ignorance and fear. Now we are supposed to find in a disease and its prevention the way to understand and direct our lives, rather than in God and in his plan for our salvation. The response of many bishops and priests and of many faithful has manifested a woeful lack of sound catechesis. So many in the church seem to have no understanding of how Christ continues his saving work in times of plague and of other disasters. What is more, our Holy Mother Church, the spotless Bride of Christ, in which Christ is ever at work for our eternal redemption, is beset by reports of moral corruption, especially in matters of the Sixth and Seventh Commandments, which seem to increase by the day. In our own nation, the reports about Theodore McCarrick have rightly tempted many devoted Catholics to question the shepherds who, in accord with Christ's plan for the Church, are to be their secure guides by teaching the truths of the faith, by leading them in the fitting worship of God and in prayer to Him, and by guiding them by means of the Church's perennial discipline. Too often, the faithful receive nothing in response, or a response which is not grounded in the unchanging truths regarding faith and morals. They receive responses that seem to come not from shepherds, but from secular managers. The confusion regarding what the church truly teaches and demands of us in accord with her teaching generates ever greater divisions within the body of Christ. All of this cripples the church in her mission of witness to divine truth and divine love at a time when the world has never needed more 
the church to be a beacon. In encountering the world, the church falsely wants to accommodate herself to the world instead of calling the world to conversion in obedience to the divine law written on every human heart and revealed in its fullness in the redemptive incarnation of God the Son. These grievous troubles, of course, present a formidable challenge to our daily Christian living. The impact of the crisis in the world and in the church is profound for all of us. Many are enduring the most painful suffering, physical, emotional, and spiritual, which such a situation necessarily causes. At a time when we need to be close to one another in Christian love, worldly forces would isolate us and have us believe that we are alone and dependent upon secular forces which would make us slaves to their godless and murderous agenda. <laughs>